I'm Maya Bicke and I'm a third year PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics in the group of Gerhard Rempe. My name is Suchita Garwal uh, and I'm a PhD student in the group of Emmanuel Bloch. Uh, he's the director of the Quantum Any Body Systems Division. I'm uh, Natalie Lenke. I'm a postdoctoral scientist here at the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics. I'm working in the field of laser physics, led by uh, Professor Ferenc Krauss, who is a director at the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics, and also he has a chair at the LMU. So the cavity is it like this? The cavity is like this. Oh, yeah, is like, is like this. Okay, cool. I'm an experimental physicist, so it's um, standing in the lab, working on the optical table, but also doing electrical connections, soldering, or going to the workshop, talking to technicians. So the idea is that we like build a network of quantum information. So just like we know the typical internet, we want to transfer quantum information from one point to the other. And what we do here is we use um, light particles, photons, which we want to transport from A to B. We have cavities, so these are like mirrors in opposite of each other, and we place our atom, our atomic qubit in the middle, and then we can couple them to the outer world with this cavity, and then we can bring the quantum information from the atom onto the light particle, the photon, and send it over long distances. And this is what we are quite unique and good at. In my lab, basically, we take atoms, we cool them down into a lattice, and then you have different species of atoms. For example, my lab works with rubidium, you also have strontium and lithium. Uh, and in the many body physics, we see what happens when you take a bunch of these particles and then you try to see what kind of dynamics they show or what kind of interesting physics happens when you put a lot of them together in a very simplified way. <laughs> I'm actually developing uh, laser systems that you can also see here in the background for uh, performing uh, medical applications to detect diseases like cancer in a very early state, well before any symptoms arise and people need to suffer from that. So we generate pulses that are um, in the femtosecond range, which is a millionth of a billionth of a second, which is extremely short, so it's hard to imagine. I am uh, initially from India. Uh, I did my bachelor's in Delhi, and then I did my master's in Switzerland, Zurich, and now I'm here in Munich. So I've done quite a bit of hopping around. When I was starting out in physics, then everything interested me, the engineering physics and the actual physics, the, the theoretical part of it, then also computer science and the coding and all of those things. And in the end, I was introduced to this thing called um, quantum technology, basically quantum computing. And Munich is a huge part of that because there is a whole uh, Munich Quantum Valley and there's a lot of big professors who are uh, in this sort of thing and so following that that's how I ended up at the Institute for Quantum Optics. I didn't even want to do a PhD I was looking into going into industry but I couldn't really find something that had to do with quantum science quantum information. So then I came across um, MPQ so the Max Planck Institute and I just applied and saw how it went from there. At the moment, I'm still working in the research, so we are still focusing on our laser technology to get even shorter pulses, get lower noise. On the other hand, we have seen that uh, these laser systems, they have a lot more applications out there and people are interested in that. So uh, that's why I'm also working part-time for a spin-off company that tries to commercialize these laser systems. And uh, it's very uh, motivating to see that what you did during your PhD, like what the hands-on um, work that you did before, somehow people make use of that. 
um, and people are interested in that. So as a doctoral student here, we basically have to do everything. So when something, the machine breaks down, then we have to fix it. If the program isn't working, we have to debug it. If anything happens, then you're basically a person with many hats. And I think, uh, and I think that's a very fun thing that you get to learn a lot about everything. You are surrounded by many smart people who know a lot, which is great. And also you get a lot of support, like financially, obviously, and but also like in, on a knowledge base and just um, the infrastructure is really good. Like we have a workshop, for example, and uh, the technicians where we can go to. So if there's something that we need to specialize just for us, we can basically go to the technicians and tell them, hey, we need this and that, and then they make a drawing for us and they, then they can manufacture it just for our purposes. Which is great because then we're not relying on what's out there in the market, but we can actually build it here in-house. And then there's also these um, the social events that happen. For example, we also have like a group retreat coming up and it's a great opportunity because we go outside of the lab and for one week we interact with each other and tell us about, give each other updates about what's happening in our labs, learn new things. And sometimes when you're very focused on the research, it's uh, like in their lab, then you're not able to really interact with other people so much. So this is, I think, a great way to do that. As a postdoc, but in contrast to doing a PhD, you're not just focusing on your own little project, but you also need to take over much more responsibility in the sense that you also need to take care of students, you need to supervise students. You also need to go to conferences. You even get invited to conferences because uh, people get to know your name or get to know your work. And also you can participate in a lot of different seminars. And that's why I really like the, the environment here at the Max Planck Institute, because it teaches you a lot about uh, project management, about um, business competence basics even. And no matter what you would like to do afterwards, no matter what, whether you would like to stay um, in academia or whether you would like to go into the industry, um, if you would like to take over a leading position there, it is extremely important that you have uh, these soft skills, that you are equipped with these soft skills. MPQ is a host of fundamental quantum science and technologies, but also laser physics that has quite diverse range of fundamental science together with applications spanning spectroscopy, high resolution spectroscopy, trying to find out about how to detect very tiny amounts of molecules, for example, up to building, let's say, quantum networks and quantum repeaters or quantum computers. Laboratories, you know, are state of the art laboratories with fantastic equipment, fantastic you know, workspaces. And we, of course, want to, you know, make sure that across the board of all the breadth, you know, female scientists, foreign uh, students and scientists coming here, we want to just attract the best of them. And so we started a new program, Women in Quantum Optics, the VICO program at MPQ. And with that, we specifically target excellent young female researchers to really start their career here at MPQ, work together with us, realize their ideas, and encourage them to work also in this exciting new, new field of research. My role as a coordinator of the VICO program is to build networks for female researchers here in the, at the Institute and beyond. With this program, there is an extra budget for equipment. Besides that, I'm also here to support the female researchers in matters of daily life. For example, I support them um, with getting a residence permit or finding a flat our language course. Just come over and knock on my door and so we can have a chat identifying your needs so that I can support you in any ways that will boost your career.
What is important, I think, from my point of view, is um, that we are trying to really um, make sure that we are interested in hiring excellent female scientists. Uh, so it's not a program to just increase the number of women, that, that's not what we want. It's really to look for excellent scientists and just motivate them in order to come here and work with us. It would be great to see more women because seeing more women in physics or in science in general, it's always encouraging for other women. Every now and then you have these thoughts that maybe if there aren't so many women, maybe, you know, there's a reason for that. But I think if there were more women, then those thoughts would not, you know, occur in your mind. There's a lot of women going into biology, for example, right? But physics and chemistry also a bit, it's still a minority. And I would definitely say, go for it because they're just as smart, just as good. Just go for it and it'll be a lot of fun. I think it's really exciting uh, to work on our research direction uh, today, especially because we are currently reaching really the limits of what we can understand with classical numerical techniques. So it's on the one hand that we are understanding quantum systems better, but at the same time there are a lot of developments in finding new applications and actually making or turning this into new technologies. And there are many people from all around the world coming with different backgrounds that work together on projects and I think that's as inspiring as you can make it as a work environment.